Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Red Gamer Theater.com video, we're going to be discussing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to be starting things out with Intel, and the Skylake X4 range of SKUs has leaked out onto the internet. So we'll be discussing the specifications and my thoughts on the various product placing. And then we're going to focus squarely on the RX Vega range of graphics cards. Notice I stress range as we have further information on Vega 10, Vega 11, and even Vega 20, plus further updates on the pricing rumors which have been plaguing us for the past couple of days or so, and also some of my thoughts on the, the blind t gaming test which Hard OCP conducted, which pitted an RX Vega FreeSync system against an NVIDIA GTX 1080 Ti system, which obviously was using G-Sync. But with that said, we're going to jump right in to the Intel side of things first. So obviously Skylake X has already launched in some of the SKUs anyway. From the rather confusing introduction of the Kaby Lake uh, processors, which of course were the 7740 and the 7640X, to the much more interesting, at least in my opinion, Skylake range, which comprises of the 7800X, the 7820X, and the 7900X, which are the processors currently available uh, to buy as of the time I'm recording this video. However, we have much more news on the other processors, and this is the 7920X, 7940X, 7960X, and finally the 7980XE. So, most of these specifications had been murmured, but now we have final confirmation that these specifications are a thing. And I'm really pleased and very actually impressed of the 7980X's clock speed in particular, because it actually turbos with Turbo Boost Technology 2, that's with all processor cores, up to 4.2 gigahertz. Yes, the base is a bit anemic at 2.6, but still, it turbos up to 4.2. Very curious to see how that plays out in terms of heat, though. I do suspect you're going to need a monster cooler. And if you're just using a couple of cores that say the system's not under too much load, then yes, it turbos up to 4.4. And these turbo clocks frequencies are actually the same for the 7960, 7940, and also the 7920X as well. Level 3 cache is basically what you'd suspect, uh, 24.75 megabytes for the level 3, and it goes down to 22 if you've got the 7960X and so on. And perhaps most interesting of all, we have final confirmation, although it was once again very much suspected and we really didn't think, given what Intel had told us and the actual board's layouts and all that stuff, but all of these processors have up to 44 PCIe lanes, which obviously means that Threadripper definitely does have the advantage. I'll link our review of the 7900X actually in the video description, and I actually really like the processor and the platform. I think it's I think it's very impressive. It's not without flaws because no platform is without flaws. It, it does put out an awful lot of heat. I feel the pricing is a bit much, and I do feel that Intel segmented the market line quite quite a lot actually and I, I feel that they made quite a few mistakes with the presentation of the boards um, and the IO in regards to the decision for example with the RAID configurations, the uh, absence of PCIe lanes with the lower end SKUs for example the 7800X only gets 28 PCIe lanes but other than that I do feel it's a pretty damn impressive platform it really remains to be seen, at least in my opinion, how Threadripper compares. I do feel that they're definitely going to have the value proposition, but let's see in terms of raw performance. Okay, so now we're going to discuss a an event, if you will, which occurred with hard OCP. Essentially, they were given a Vega system and an RX Vega. I just want to stress that, not the Frontier Edition, and a GTX 1080 Ti. Now, what they decided to do was pretty simple. They stripped the systems down. Um, they basically reformatted them, installed their own version of Windows. Aside from the Vega drivers, those were done by AMD themselves. The GTX 1080, they supplied, even though, once again, uh, Nvidia did supply, uh, sorry, AMD did supply GTX 1080 Ti, but they decided to use their own just to make sure there was no funny business and so on. And basically, what happened was they decided to ask 10 gamers, who were essentially his friends, 
which system they preferred, and the results were pretty pretty interesting actually. So the games were being played at 3440 by 1440p, and apparently six out of the ten participants said that the experience between the two systems were basically equal. One preferred NVIDIA, and of course for those who are pretty good at math, you can probably imagine that three therefore preferred the AMD RX Vega system. So it does appear that, at least according to these tests, RX Vega is performing better than the GTX 1080 Ti, or at least that's what you could take away from this. But despite the fact that these uh, gamers do include esports pros, hardcore Twitch streamers, and so on, and even journalists. That isn't to say that this is exactly the best test ever. For a start, there was no frame rate counter. The frame rate was actually limited to 100 hertz. And to be honest, this more feels like not a test for the RX Vega. I feel people are misread interpreting this. I don't think you should be getting performance data or trying to analyze performance data from what people are saying, you know, their experiences were on both systems. Instead, this was clearly an indication of, uh, sorry, this was clearly an attempt, not an indication, this is clearly an attempt by AMD to show that the FreeSync technology is definitely up to snuff with a high-end uh, NVIDIA rig, and you can't really tell the difference. In fact, some users did feel that there was better tracking, that they felt that they could lock onto the targets better with the uh, RX Vega system, uh, particularly when they were performing fast movements, like, for example, a 90-degree turn, that type of thing. So it's quite interesting that these results are, you know, being um, shared, and I would suggest that you check out the video. I'll link it in the video description. I just don't want you to go into this thinking, well, that means that the two systems are equal in terms of performance. No, essentially it was limited to 100 hertz. I feel that instead this was more designed by AMD to show that the systems, at least with the FreeSync monitor, perform very closely and there's more of a, of a uh, close match type of situation. Okay, so we have some information from the EEC, which is EuroAsia. Euro Asia, excuse me, Economic Commission. Now, this is a regulatory body, which is a bit like the US's FCC. The basic premise here is that before a product is allowed to enter the market, go on sale, it needs to be certified that it's not going to explode or, or produce like dangerous radio frequencies, that type of thing. And this is for everything that's electronic. So this includes the most obvious culprits like smartphones and, uh, you know, laptops, that type of thing. But it also needs to include graphics cards. What's rather interesting here is that their website actually mentions the AMD Vega 20. And from what we hear that this variant will actually have four HBM2 stacks, which means you've got 32 gigabytes capacity. However, according to this listing on the EEC, Vega 20 is only expected as a GL variant. This essentially means that it's not going to be for RX Vega. This is going to be for like, you know, the Radeon Pro slash Instinct series only. So it's not really something that gamers are going to probably be getting their hands on anytime soon. We also hear murmurs on Vega 11 and Vega 12. Now, Vega 11 is a bit of an anomaly because it's been murmured for some time that we're going to be getting Vega 11. After all, Vega 10 and Vega 11 were among some of the first rumors that we even heard about the Vega cards, you know, that we'd be getting two distinct kind of entries into the Vega, into the Vega lineup. And this is pretty common, after all, we saw it with uh, Polaris 10, Polaris 11. Now, as you can imagine, Vega 11 is going to be the smaller chip, and therefore most likely is going to be aimed at the mid-range. But, unfortunately, answers are not exactly forthcoming right now. Uh, the listing on this particular website does show that we've got Vega 11 XT, Vega 11 Pro, and that once again is going to be for AIB and upwards custom based uh, cards. And there is also an entry for Fire Pro cards as well, and one entry for the Vega 12 XT, which also is once again listed as a Fire Pro card. We also have more 
confirmation regarding Vega 10, and that is we're going to be seeing XTX and XT and an XL. The XTX is going to launch as liquid cooled, but will also be available in air cooling. Um, the XTX has a higher TDP than XT. I don't know if this is going to mean there's going to be differences in clock speeds as well, turbo clocks, that type of thing. We'll once again have to wait. Um, and also Vega 10 XL is being listed uh, as a variant and from rumours it appears that it's for AIBs and OEMs only. Alright, now we're going to be discussing pricing. I'd like to thank a viewer for actually sending me this link over. Uh, his name is George, so thanks very much to him if he's watching. And even if not, thanks very much to George. So. The German Facebook page for AMD actually commented on the Vega pricing. Uh, we understand your worries, but please let us say this. It's only an unconfirmed rumor. and We don't comment on those in general, but we hope you will form your opinion about Vega after official or independent uh, benchmarks, but confirmed information about it. And then they also answered again. This is under the same Facebook comment. Guys, please be sweethearts. Uh, we said about rumours what there is to say. To please read the last paragraph of the article you posted. There's a bunch of reasons to doubt this information and pricing coming from Sweden. So please wait and see. Now, it looks like AMD are basically debunking this and saying that the pricing is inaccurate. Personally, I don't feel that these prices are accurate. I, I feel that they're just way too high, um, quite honest. And... At the thousand-ish dollar price that was being quoted by some Swedish website, or actually some Nordic websites as a whole. In fact, some of those prices were even listed in the UK. It's possible those were uh, placeholder prices, or they were just inaccurate, or they were just, you know, being false reported, whatever the case may be. It's obvious that those prices just weren't going to fly, even if this card puts out performance that's 20% faster than a regular vanilla GTX 1080. Because at those kind of prices, it's not that much more to get like a Titan XP for the sake of argument. With that said, there was a possibility in my mind that there was another version of Vega that they might be referring to, like the liquid cooled version, which might be like much higher performance than possibly we'd give it credit for. So it equivalently would be AMD's version of a Titan. However, it doesn't look like that's going to be the case. It looks like the cards are going to be, you know, within the realms of a GTX 1080 price. But, and you know what I'm going to say, unfortunately, we're just going to have to wait until launch. I am hoping that it's going to be roughly comparable to the GTX 1080 pricing with possibly slightly improved performance. I do feel it interesting, however, that we're seeing AMD pit the card now against the GTX 1080 tie for these blind tests. So maybe it's going to be more in realm with GTX 1080, maybe a little bit behind, sorry, more in line with a GTX 1080 tie, maybe a couple of percent slower, but possibly cheaper. Maybe that's the kind of price performance ratio AMD would be going for. For example, let's say with all of the driver updates, with all of the you know, the tweaks and whatever else they've managed to do with Vega, it performs in between the GTX 1080 and the TI. I think people would be very happy with that if it was priced at around the same level as a vanilla GTX 1080. I think that would be pretty damn awesome. Unfortunately, and you know what I'm going to say, we're just going to have to wait a couple of days. And even when SIGGRAPH comes and goes, and we have those inevitable performance results from AMD, I would still advise you to hold fire, wait for independent testing, because ultimately AMD are going to show the card in the best light they can probably do. They're probably going to be seeing the, you know, the Vulcan tests for Doom and so on, which obviously have a tendency to not, you know, do so well on NVIDIA hardware. Although to be fair to NVIDIA, their recent driver updates have really improved Vulcan performance quite substantially. So let's just wait, you know, don't panic yet. Take the information, just use it to kind of say, okay, it's possible the price could be this, so you don't get super disappointed, but at the same time, don't be expectant or hope the product fails or anything like that. Let's just wait and see. With all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.